EPA Dubois Bay Meteorologist Bobby Martin here with your Outlook for December 10th, 2021. It is Friday, and Friday's video forecast is sponsored by Georgia's Quick Stop Cafe in Marshalls Creek, Pennsylvania. They are on Milford Road, which is also Route 209 in the Stroudsburg area of Monroe County. They are your one-stop shop for food, beer, wine, and fuel. They are locally owned and operated and have a vast beer selection, wine labels from every local Pocono winery, and food prepared and cooked on the premises by professional kitchen team. They are Georgia's Quick Stop Cafe, proud sponsors of the Friday forecast video. So... Uh, today we're going to get into what to expect here in the in the week ahead, like we normally do. I'm going to get a little bit of a physics technical side of things here too, because we have to put some things to rest uh, with uh, what's coming on Saturday. There's a lot of misinformation out there, so I want to clear that up a little bit. Uh, so first today we have uh, some clouds to start, and then we'll uh, have some sun in the afternoon. It's out, clouds giving way to sun. Uh, situation today. Temperatures are going to be notably warmer here today. Not quite as warm as it's going to be on Saturday, but Notably warmer, 44 to 52 is the spread from northwest to southeast, so uh, after a cold couple of days, we'll break out of that a little bit today. As we get a little bit of warm air advection, we're going to have even more warm air advection coming in with a warm front moving through overnight. And I uh, could toss off a few showers in the, during the uh, uh, mid to late evening through the overnight period from southwest to northeast, and that'll uh, be off to the north uh, near the Pennsylvania-New York border by the time we get to Saturday morning. Now, Saturday is going to be cloudy. For the majority of the day until later in the day when we have the uh, the cold front moving through. And I'll give you timing of that here in a second. Here's that uh, strong cold front and is being driven by a strong area low pressure in the Great Lakes region. Okay, uh, so this is going to move eastward and then late in the day and evening, probably early to mid-evening It's uh, is the time frame from west to east here. And then we th this will move through and then it uh, moves off the coast rather quickly. So by the time we get to Sunday, we are back to partly cloudy skies and temperatures dropping back uh, into the 40s for highs after we are 62 to 70 here on Saturday. Uh, the reason for that uh, spike in warmth there is because we are, uh, is warm air advection, very strong warm air advection that is coming in ahead of this front. Strong southwesterly wind flow and that's going to get these temperatures up. And again, you had this uh, low pressure here. Uh, the warm front situated like this at this point Cold front, as very obviously you can see, is right here. So we're in that warm sector. You'll hear us talk about warm sectors all the time. We're going to be that warm sector uh, for this particular system. Now, this is a system coming in, in December. It is not coming in in September, okay? Uh, if this were September, we would have a severe weather threat today. Uh, I don't think we're going to have that severe uh, for, for Saturday, I should, I should say. Um, there's a lot of talk about severe weather here for Saturday. Is so we're going to be uh, organized line of, of of storms moving through and convection and and tornadoes and come on. Uh, anyway, uh, so I'm going to show you why that's not likely. Okay, so this uh, this is that I already showed you this moving through. Let's go over to the Nam here just to show you what this is doing. Here's those showers, few showers moving through during the overnight period. This is worth the warm front, warm air advection. Okay, uh, that'll lift off the north by the time we get to Saturday morning. It'll be up near New York State, so you'll have Maybe a leftover shower early in the morning across New York State, and that's it. Here's our cold front line out here in western Pennsylvania uh, as we get. This is looking at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning on Saturday. Moving this forward in time, I'm going to move this all the way up to here, which is 4 o'clock in the afternoon. At 4 o'clock in the afternoon, you see a squall line with this, okay? Uh, this isn't a tremendous amount of rain with this. This is just like a squall line you would have in summertime when you have the severe thunderstorms moving through. The problem is... Uh, they're not going to be severe. Uh, you're going to it's going to be a repeat of what we saw on Monday, where we had, um, you know, maybe a little bit breezy out ahead of it, maybe 15 to 25 mile, mile per hour winds. Uh, but then when the front hit, you knew it hit because the winds just went right and took off. We had a big surge of wind, uh, and then a couple hours after that, with some cold air advection wind that followed it. That is exactly what that we're expecting out of this. Okay, it's the same kind of deal. Uh, with this particular system, if you look at the, I'm going to stop this here at uh, at 21Z, which is uh, which is 4 p.m. Saturday, and go over to the to the wind expectations at this point. The front, as you can see back here, the front is still back here. Okay, so we're looking for winds back in here at this time, accompany the front. This is where the squall line is, right here. Okay, I'm going to kind of like do this here, as you can see. Uh, squall line's right in here. All of this out in front of here that's showing these strong winds ahead of it is bull, okay? It's not going to happen, 
You're not going to have those strong winds out in front like this showing to be just as strong as that squall line. And the reason for that is because you have a temperature inversion, a well-defined temperature inversion, up at about three, 4,000 feet above the ground, okay? And you can see that on the soundings here. If you ever look at these, if you're one of those uh, weather enthusiasts that are really into the soundings or trying to learn something here, uh, this red line represents the temperature as you go in. And then on the left-hand side of the column, it's a different altitude as you go up in altitude, okay? This uh, th all the way at the bottom here is the surface. So it's 58 degrees here at the surface it's showing. Typically, as you go up in, in uh, altitude, the temperature decreases nine times out of ten okay it will decrease with height as you go up in the go up in higher altitudes right so in this case we have an, an inversion and then see this little tick where it goes to the right here and it, and the temperatures actually go it, it's decreasing to a certain point once you get to about three four thousand feet though the temperature goes up even more than what it is at the surface so you have a that's called a temperature inversion or a capping inversion and what that does is two things. It's going to prevent all of these winds that are shown here out ahead of it from reaching the surface, okay? A portion of it will get down to the surface, maybe 15, 20, 25 miles per hour, okay, out ahead of it, out ahead of that line, uh, but it's not going to be 45, 50 miles per hour, okay, because of that capping inversion in place. And this is universally modeled. This is not just one model showing this. It's, it's all of them, okay? So because of that capping version. Uh, you can't have uh, the wind being transported in down in downward momentum of this of the uh, of the wind to the surface. Okay, so you have that cutoff there. Uh, second thing is the whole concept of a thunderstorm of thunderstorm growth is cold air at the or warm air at the surface rising towards cold air aloft. Well, if it's not able to rise to more than three or four thousand feet above the ground because of this inversion here, it's actually going backwards. You have warm air rising toward warmer air. Well, that doesn't that's not how, how it works. That's not how physics works, okay? Uh, so thunderstorms can't grow. This is called low-topped convection. And in that case, you can't get, you're not going to get severe weather out of that. You might have strong winds, but it's for a different reason, okay? Uh, and again, very similar to what we had uh, here on Monday. So all of this out in front of it is nonsense. Also, the severe weather is not going to be there. And furthermore, uh, here is the projected instability, and it's virtually nothing. You get up to as, as the highest it gets here is maybe 100, 150 joules. That's not enough to produce severe weather. Not even close. Not close. Okay, you probably won't see lightning in most cases. You could see an arbitrary flash here and there uh, with that when a line moves through, but I wouldn't uh, bank on it. So it'd be little to none in lightning. Okay, so this is low top convection, and there's no severe weather potential. There's no, certainly no tornado potential with this. Uh, the, every, just because the shear is high doesn't make this a severe weather day. So I'm going to move this forward from this point. So again, this is 4 o'clock. Here is 5. Here is 6. You still see a squall line here at 6 p.m. Here's 7. Here is 8. Just moving through far eastern Pennsylvania at about 7, 8 o'clock here at this point. Uh, I did meet up with uh, Mike at uh, Lowe's today. He, I met him today, and he was asking me about the timing. He has an event here on uh, Saturday evening. So if you're watching, uh, it's looking like 7, 8 o'clock is now looking like the time frame for that for your uh, event to try to dodge around that. Uh, but uh, moving forward from this point, it just goes into New Jersey, moves off the coast here about 10 o'clock, and then that is out of here. So there is your window right there. Once this front comes through, it's going to announce itself in a hurry, just like it did on Monday. You're going to have the winds pick up because that's going to break through that inversion. This inversion that's here is going to disappear. If I move this forward to when the, the when it actually moves through, which is right here, look at that. Now it's going up. Uh, the the uh, air is uh, going. The temperatures are going uh, lower as you're going up with an altitude here, like it's supposed to be. So all of those winds can now break down to the surface. So this is going to this. Cold front, when it moves through, is going to break that cap, and that's why you're going to get that sudden rush to the wind because they're now able to be tra uh, transported down to the surface, those stronger winds. So you'll get that initial gust with the surge with that uh, when the cold front moves through, and then behind it, you're still going to have some winds here that are going to be generally uh, 15 to 25, gusting 30 to 35. That's going to continue to up to about midnight or just after that. Then we'll start to weaken a little bit overnight. Still breezy in a Sunday morning a little bit. But then we have, again, uh, partly to mostly sunny skies following here on Sunday with temperatures in the 40s. And then we are mostly sunny Monday, Tuesday, uh, Wednesday of next week. And then uh, once we get to Thursday, we might have uh, an increase in clouds depending on the speed of this next frontal boundary coming in. Uh, we are going to warm up toward the end of next week, but in the early part of the week, we're generally 
50, 52, 54-ish, somewhere in there. It's still going to be slightly above average, but nothing crazy. Uh, once we get to the end of the week, Thursday, Friday, you might get up in the upper 50s near 60. Not quite as warm as this surge here on Saturday, uh, but this is another synoptically driven thing where you're going to get the temperatures a little bit warmer uh, as ahead of this frontal boundary. Uh, but when this comes through, then you have uh, probably another one coming through on the 19th, which is right here. And then finally, some cooler air coming in uh, after that point. I'll update that in a long-range outlook today. We have that scheduled for release every single Friday. And we'll look at the pattern ahead and uh, see, we have, uh, see, see if we can identify when the cold air is going to be coming in, uh, coming back after this very warm pattern we're expecting over the next week or two. I'm EPA, Billy Meteorologist Bobby Marchers. That is your outlook for December 10th, 2021. Have a great Friday.